By now you're familiar with this diagram. What I pointed out is that we're going to look at the database as the heart of an enterprise application because it contains the memory of the application. And we said we'll first study SQL, which is what we are doing now, which is the way by which we access information stored inside the relational database. Once we finish that, we'll go on to look at how to design these databases. Right now, we are seeing databases that I've already designed and given to you, but we'll see how to design the databases. And then finally, once we have learned how to design a database, we'll then go and look at how to build a web-based application using the database that we've already defined. So we continue with the database of Chris Date, like the same database that we used last week. And by now you're familiar with this database. It has four tables, suppliers, parts, projects, shipments. And this database is already provided to you in printed form with the course material on week two. So that's already available from the prior week. You can always get it. So now we've already looked at a certain set of commands, the basic commands, basic SQL select statements, right? We saw how to select all the columns of a table, how to select a certain set of columns of a table, how to select only certain rows that satisfy specific conditions, how to use aggregate functions. We've looked at all of that um, I think by now you would have got adequate practice on those. So now let's go forward and look at some more aspects of SQL. Okay, so let's see if we want to get uh, the details of all the suppliers in London or Paris. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And of course, what we are looking at, this is the supplier table. It has suppliers from London, Paris, Athens, but we are only interested in suppliers from London or Paris. So the first, second, third and fourth suppliers are figured in our output. The fifth one doesn't because that supplier is not from either London or Paris. Of course, we already know how to do this. We learned how to do this by using the or uh, logical operator in the where condition. So we said select star from suppliers where city equals London or city equals Paris. So you could do it like this, but that's using the OR logical operator. There's another way to do this also, and that is to do it using the IN operator. So you could say select star from suppliers where city in the set that is mentioned afterwards. Okay, so uh, the second approach is more convenient, especially when you have lots of values for which you want to check the condition. That is, you want to say where city is London or city is Paris or city is Athens or or otherwise you could say where the weight is 10 or weight is 20 or weight is 30. When you have many such options, it's easier to code that in SQL using the in operator. Okay, of course, as always, if you're using textual values, you have to surround them with single quotes. If it's numeric values, just put the values as they are. That is, that doesn't change. But the important point here is how to use the in operator. Okay, so this is just an alternative. Okay, uh, something for you to try out. Get all the details of green or blue parts. As always, when it's your turn, you'll pause the video, write down your answer, make sure your answer is it's fine, and then you can proceed with the video. So you can use the pause button at the bottom to pause it, do your work, and then continue the video. Again, I stress the importance of you trying to do it before you move on. Uh, I think that's the place where learning really occurs when you do something on your own. And then when you come back and watch the video, the video has value. If you've not done it and if you just proceed with the video, then you're going to lose out on some useful learning. Uh, you know, you, you, you're doing this, so you might as well make best use of your time. Okay. Uh, so again, what we're seeing is uh, green or blue parts. So this is all the parts. So green or blue parts there, you've got green, blue, blue. So those are the only three things that are going to figure in your output. Okay, and that's what you're seeing here. Of course, I'm sure you got this right. You could do it using the or select star from parts where color equals green or color equals blue. Or you could do it using the preferred approach, which says select star from parts where color in green comma blue. 
which is the preferred approach. So that's just another new thing that I introduced for you, how to use the in operator.